All right, let's get this started. Hello, everybody. Um, I'm the Joint Doctor here to answer some questions on Zaggy Forum. And um, we have some interesting questions this time, as, uh, as always. And uh, before I get started, I just want to say that we've, we've, my, my colleagues and I have organized everything um, regarding my, my lecture at Canifest in, in Prague uh, in the autumn. So uh, I'm starting to count the days and uh, writing my speech and uh, all those things. And I'm pretty happy because uh, I will get to spend some time in Prague with uh, one of you guys, the winner of our contest. Uh, so don't, yeah, don't forget about the contest. So uh, the winner will get a, a, a uh, weekend in Prague at the Canafest to chill, also uh, to meet with me and my team. And in order to win uh, this weekend, you need to make a grow report, uh, write a grow report. You can grow several grow reports if you want and enter them into the contest uh, with any of the doctor's choice strains and publish it right here on Zaggy. Okay. And uh, I'll be choosing the best uh, the best report myself. So don't waste time and good luck. All right, now let's get started with this first question. Uh, I'm gonna read the question uh, from Grow Guru, and he says, "Hi, Doc. I'm trying to grow Rock Machine and Devochka." Tell us, please, in details about these two strains. How do they behave in indoor and outdoor? Do you have any tips about cultivating them to have good results? Well, uh, Grow Guru, that's quite a big question. Um, okay, for starters, Rock Machine is an auto flowering cross, the famous Indica Northern Lights, so it has a lot of Afghani genetics. And it's quite strong. Um, the Vodka is a cross of the amazingly popular AK-47. It's also strong, but has more of a cerebral sativa buzz. Both auto strains are from the new generation of large autos. And they can grow quite big and strong. The bigger the pot you use, generally the bigger the plant. And the, the taller and, and uh, more stout. The plant you, you get and the, also the longer period of uh, maturation so basically they start to flower when they feel good and the roots fill the entire space of the pot um, the, so the, the it really depends on your expectations and what you're uh, what you're looking to get out of it um, I could go on all day about ways to get the most out of your plants but um, growing these strains indoors is it's similar to other types, other types of plants. You know, there are actually many different ways to grow. And so it really depends on your situation and abilities and what you're looking to get out of it. Um, what else? Love your plants. Pay attention to them. Spend time with them daily. Uh, plan your growing strategy in advance and try to visualize all the steps uh, you need to take to make the most out of your grow. And uh, no, they'll give uh, they'll give the, your love right back to you. Um, for more gardening tips, just stay tuned to our forum and keep those questions uh, coming. Try to be specific if you can. Now, I'll go on to the next question. I want to ask, what is your favorite genetic? From what part of our planet? As for me, the best one grows in Afghanistan. Don't you have plans to work with pure Afghani genetics to make it out of flowering? Peace. That was a question from Aoi. Actually, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that properly. Um, your first question about genetics, it's, it's very difficult for me to pick a favorite. In fact, it's impossible. Um, you know, there are so many, there's so much diversity, and I like that diversity. I like the different flavors, different strains. And uh, as a breeder, I have to keep an open mind to all the wide range of uh, different strains. So I can't really answer that. Um, about the Afghani strain, uh, it's, a, it's a really good uh, 
It's a good idea. Other people have worked with pure Afghani uh, strains to make autoflowering. Um, I'll tell you, actually, uh, my father had a real Afghani strain many, many years ago. Uh, we're talking about 30 years ago that uh, some, you know, some hippies brought back from Afghanistan. And unfortunately, those seeds, I remember that was an amazing strain. Even back then, it was, it was, it was something amazing, pure, uh, pure um, indica. But unfortunately, I lost the strain. Um, and uh, wish I'd had it again. You know, I can't, uh, I can't do everything. I don't have time to, I don't have the resources to work with, you know, uh, dozens and dozens of strains. So I gotta focus my energies on something. Uh, all right, on to the next question. Uh, question from Head 3D. Doctor, let me say hi from our huge motherland. Tell me, please, when will you hang out, chill with Zagi? I mean, with the forum administration and Zagi seed shops. And could you make a video after you come about the situation in Russia and a guide for Russian seed shops and breeders? Well, uh, hi, Head 3D. Uh, nice to hear from you. Unfortunately, in the summertime, especially, I'm, uh, I don't have a lot of time to spend on, on the forums. And uh, I do promise to answer your questions uh, on here as often as possible. And I will be uh, spending more time, especially during the winter. Right now, I'm just too busy farming. Uh, your idea about the guide for uh, sort of an insider's guide to the Russian grow scene, that's a very good idea. And, uh, you know, I'll, I'll talk to uh, my colleagues about that. Um, maybe we can promote Russia as a new ganja tourist destination. I mean, I don't think it, it, that idea has caught on yet, but uh, who knows? We could change that together, right? All right. Well, thanks for your question. Next one uh, from Bola Bolala. Bola Bolala. Uh, welcome, Sasha. Yes, it is interesting about auto flowering regulars like they had been before. Will you see old buddy lowrider number two regular? And the most important question, what is your native language? What language do you speak at your place? Um, well, uh, actually we speak uh, English at home. We speak, uh, I also speak French and, uh, and Spanish and uh polish but uh not well and um, i'm working on my russian so uh the question about uh, the low rider i guess you're you're asking whether we're gonna have um, regular low rider number two original breeder seeds and the answer is absolutely yes uh in fact we will have those available for our grand opening uh at the latest in the fall in Prague. All right. Now, uh, next question. Uh, I guess this is the last question I'm going to take uh, uh, today. How is Mark Emery? How is everything going for him? Do you still communicate and have any cooperations? Uh, Mark Emery, actually, first off, I'll tell you, Canada is a big place. I live on the right side. Mark Emery is in Vancouver, which is uh, 4,000 kilometers away. So is it a different province? It's a whole different scene. Uh, actually, in, in British Columbia, things are more liberal uh, than here in Quebec and in Eastern Canada. Uh, of course, I see Mark, I talk to Mark from time to time, but we have, uh, let's just say, different approaches to uh, to the movement and to uh, to being activists, Mark likes to be likes to have a lot of attention, be right in people's faces. I guess that's why you're hearing about him so much, even in you know even in uh, East. But um, really, I don't have very much to do with Mark anymore. He's out of the seed business. Actually, the government banned him from you know, selling seeds. So he's doing other things. Um, okay. There's a second part to your question. Have you been to Morocco? 
If yes, what are your impressions? Uh, I haven't been to Morocco. I'd love to go to Morocco because I've been to the south of Spain. And I understand there's a lot of, uh, you know, cultural similar similarities there. And of course, the hash in, in, in Spain was very good. I have very good memories of my time in Spain and the different types of hash that I sampled and uh, shared with my my student friends over there. Uh, okay, and uh, I guess uh, just to, to let you know, I'll be I'll be uh, speaking at Canafest. I think uh, I just got news that it's confirmed. So I'm super excited to, um, to go to Prague. And um, until then, keep the questions coming. And uh, I'll, I'll try to uh, stay in touch. Um, it's, oh, somebody's calling. All right. Well, anyways. Listen, it was great to answer your questions, and I hope to see you soon, and have a great time. Cheers.